Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ah, delicious. Today is Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. I'm doing a new experiment today. Uh, if you're a usual listener and you're on YouTube or uh, listening via podcast, then you will notice that I had a 10 minute delay. It's because I am doing this also via TikTok Live. I'm seeing if I can do that at the same time. Um, so I've got my phone up here next to the camera. And I thought I'd just see if I can do the TikTok Live um, at the same time that I record the podcast. So cheers to you all. That's why I'm doing it. If you are new to the podcast, this is something I do four days a week. Um, I'm on mountain time, so usually somewhere around 7 or 8 in the morning, chat over my first cup of coffee for 15, 20 minutes or so, usually closer to 20. So, and um, the brand here at First Cup of Coffee is, we just chat about anything. Um, feel free to send me questions. Uh, I'm often responding to things that are going on in the writing and publishing world. So I try to give context. Sometimes there is no context for you. Also keep you updated on my writing life, what I'm working on, how it's going. Uh, sometimes we don't even want to talk about that. Uh, but since I haven't given an update on the writing recently, I can let you all know that, well, Rogue Familiar is coming along. It's, it's getting there. I may... <laughs> To my chagrin, I know I already pushed the uh, release date back a month. Uh, it should have released today. Ha ha ha! Did not happen. So, um, but so it goes. The good news is, is that uh, this other book that I've been working on for Agent Sarah that we're going to go on submission with, I'm really excited about. And so I've gotten a, you know, that got going. So, um, so yeah. Rogue Familiar, shooting for that March 25th release date. I might have to move it back a few days. I'm hoping not. Uh, I'm, I'm through scene three. I'm at 33,563 words, hoping to get a whole lot more done. I know I keep saying that. I'm going to be ramping up that word count. <sighs> it could happen. So, uh, but I am going to write her copy this morning. It's with some of the writer friends, so that'll be... That'll be good. Be not necessarily high word count, but restorative. So, um, things I wanted to talk about. So on Tuesday uh, on the podcast, I discussed some of the things that have been going on with, um, well, basically selling shovels to gold miners, right? And so I led you all to move the extended analogy of writers and creators being the ones who are the source of wealth and how others build their businesses off of that. And there are legit shovel businesses out there. Miners need shovels. Uh, if you can find someone who can sell you a good shovel, more power to you. Uh, we need those supportive communities. We need our cover designers, our formatters, our retail platforms. Uh, all the people that enable us to actually turn that gold into money that we can live off of. Uh, people to cook for you and bring in food and all of that. If, um, if I'm condensing too much, listen to Tuesday's podcast. Uh, but the downside of this is the toxic individuals in the community who are basically predators. So there's a couple things I want to mention to you all today. One of them, let's talk about conferences. Uh, some of this comes off of that there was a spectacular meltdown earlier this week. Someone who had planned to do a conference to which a bunch of writers had committed to attend. We're looking forward to attending. And now it's not going to happen. It's been canceled. And the one of the organizers uh, kind of went on social media to say that it was a hotel's fault, that the hotel wanted $200,000 to do this. So I, you know, I feel like I, this is where someone actually the other day, um, CM Nascosta, 
who is a delight, she created an emoji just for me that is the Generation X emoji um, because it is she 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 is us, she and I is us. Uh, it's the one from um, Will and Grace with you know the character holding the martini. Uh, and so here I am holding my cup of coffee, being very Gen X jaded and cynical. But listen, oh my best beloved. This is the world of business. When you negotiate with hotels, they are not in it to make us, um, to make it, I don't know, what do I want to say? They're in it to make money, right? Especially a big chain. Uh, they have all kinds of corporate rules. And when you negotiate with a hotel, they are going to negotiate to the hilt. And I can say this right now as, um, someone uh you know because i am president of the science fiction and fantasy writers association right now and we are having our big conference in may the nebula conference you should come it's in anaheim it's going to be awesome but a huge huge part of planning the conference is negotiating with the hotel because hotels will scrape every they will nickel and dime you to death um, so here's the basic premise of negotiating with the hotel if you're going to put on a conference, just because so many people don't seem to, to know this. If you're going to have a conference there, they require certain commitments from you. It's not like you can say, oh, hey, kids, let's put on a show in the barn. The barn is not free. Uh, you have to promise the hotel certain things. Now, you might think that you have to rent the event space from the hotel, right? You know, like where you want to have your award ceremony or the rooms that you want to have your panels in. Not necessarily. But what you do need to do is you have to be able to, sorry about the notification. I don't, I thought maybe having TikTok live would uh, mute the notification, but apparently not. I'll have to figure out how to do that. Um, and I don't dare pause pause the live. I feel like Mark Ruffalo. I tried to do the Facebook live and I screwed it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cheers, Gen Xers. Anyway, uh, if you work it right, you can actually get all of that event space for free. Uh, and usually most hotels will, off will offer that. Um, I am going to add the huge, huge caveat that post pandemic, all bets are off. Okay. The hotels lost massive amounts of money during pandemic. Um, big shocker, right? You know, everybody stopped traveling and they're trying to recoup this money. Uh, so they are nickel and diming worse than ever. They've raised their prices ridiculously. It's, um, yeah, it's just, it's hard. It's hard all around. So, with the hotel, what you do is you say, I'm going to have a conference there and I'm going to bring in this many people. And they may say, okay, if you commit to a block of 200 rooms for these three nights and an F and B, which is food and beverage, you promise to spend a food and beverage amount of so much money, then you can uh, have your conference here and we will give you all of this space. Now, one thing that we negotiated with the Sheraton for is we wanted to have the whole hotel to ourselves. It's not a huge space and we wanted the run of the property, which means that they can't do anything else there. That's ideal. Um, but it, it did mean that we had to go an extra step because again, they want to make money, right? So they're going to cram in other events, you know, like, oh, they can have a wedding at the same time. So this is why if you're at a conference and there's like, um, you know, there's like two weddings going on and a bachelorette party and also a high school graduation, you're like, oh, all this stuff's going on at the same time. This is why they're going to cram as much stuff as possible in order to up their income, their, you know, their business, right? So when somebody says, this is the hotel's fault. Did you know that the hotel wanted $200,000 from me? Next time I will mute my notifications. I'll figure out how to do this. I didn't want to mute the audio on the TikTok, uh, but I'm sure I can make this work. I'll practice. Uh, 
Um, that t text, by the way, was from the delightful D Dorinda Jones. That's her uh, message. Um, she says to tell everyone hi. She means that writer copy, but I'm going to tell you all hi from Dorinda Jones. Who is on TikTok, but she has like 43 followers. I think 44 because I just followed her and she's posted nothing. So we might have to like sort of bring Dorinda into the fold here. Another Gen Xer. Uh, if you haven't read Dorinda's books, who are we kidding? You've all read Dorinda's books. Uh, see, I told you tangents were part of the brand here at First Cup of Coffee. So anyway, um, when somebody says the hotel wanted $200,000, what that means is that when they negotiated with the hotel, when they signed the freaking contract with the hotel, all those numbers were in there, right? This is not like this was a sudden surprise that the hotel said, okay, you need to commit to this many rooms and a food and beverage budget of this much and that that amount came to $200,000. And if you don't spend that much during the weekend or week days of your conference, then you have to pay us the balance, right? So if all goes well, if your conference is a hit, if you are Jennifer L. Armentrout and you are doing a polycon, uh, which a lot of people are like saying, oh, I could do this, I could do a polycon. Well, that's part of why Jennifer charges a certain amount of money from all of the attendees. It's not to line her pockets. Jennifer's got plenty of money. Uh, it is to help offset what she has to pay the hotel to have the conference there. But hopefully you'll make up a whole lot of it because all the people that come and stay and they spend their, let's say a thousand dollars for the three nights of their stay and they eat at the hotel and drink at the bar. And so then you make your $200,000 worth of room and F and B and you come out even and you don't end up owing the hotel money, right? You make up some of that from registrations too. That's why we charge registrations for conferences. Uh, you know, like our Nebula conference is more expensive this year because we had to negotiate a fresh contract with a hotel. There are other conferences out there that are charging much, much less for registration. But a lot of these are places that have either been at the same hotel for year after year after year. And so they have an ongoing contract, right? They have a multi-year contract that gives them a discount or they are um, able to, they, they've negotiated years in advance. What we had to do with Sephora being a small organization. We're a nonprofit. We don't um, have a huge margin um, uh, I don't, in our treasury. We, we have a lot of commitments, a lot of things that we do besides the conference. So when pandemic hit, we ended up having to cancel our hotel contracts, which means that we paid a penalty. Um, that's the price of doing business. But we did not go ahead and do future contracts with hotels because we were relieved to be out of the ones that we had been in because at least we didn't owe future money uh, and we had to wait and see we weren't sure how long the pandemic was going to go on we thought we would be able to do an in-person conference in 2022 and then we couldn't and it sucked but there it goes so you know, believe me, we've been negotiating our little hearts out to get the best deal we can with the hotel. It's going to be a great conference. We had to charge more for registration. Um, we're counting on a certain amount of rooms and F and B. In fact, we negotiated them down on some of their other costs by promising them a higher F and B because we said, believe me, these are writers. They are going to drink at your bars. You, you won't sell. If you have people tending the bar, um, and we had to ask them to expand their bar hours too, uh, then we will make up this F and B. So, so this is all a fairly long in the weeds explanation, but I feel like people need to know this because on Tuesday, I referenced another gal who tried to put together a conference at a very expensive hotel in downtown Denver. And she was, and this was way pre-pandemic, so 
you know, she was not getting the registrations that she thought she would get. And, and she was very upset about it and telling us how she was going to be, you know, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in debt on her credit card because she'd used her credit card to guarantee this with the hotel. It's like, I know that there's a magical thinking idea of if you build it, they will come, right? Um, but keep in mind that that comes from Field of Dreams and the people who came were reincarnated baseball players. So, you know, it's like, not a really solid method for doing business. And also everybody said he was crazy, right? And, you know, legit, right? So, so that's what's happened with this, with that conference, the one in Denver, with this one that's the recent meltdown. Uh, she wasn't getting the registrations for it and she knew she was not going to be able to meet that contractual obligation with the hotel. And that's why she canceled. So uh, I've just been hearing a lot of people talking in different ways about uh, how, how that worked. This, this is no doubt how it worked. And, um, you know, if people don't know what they're doing, this is what happens. And the, the really bad part is because this person did not know what they were doing, it is now coming back on all of the, the readers who did register it's coming back on the authors who have non-refundable plane tickets. Uh, I don't know what the hotel room cancellation is like, but they may end up losing money on that. Um, sucks. And that's what happens when you get people who are, uh, and I'm just going to say incompetent. If you don't know how to negotiate with a hotel to bring off a conference, you don't start with a $200,000 conference, people. Um, you, that's why they talk about, you know, business is the number one reason that small businesses fail is too rapid expansion, right? I don't know if it's number one, but rapid expansion is a killer because you overextend. Uh, yeah. And, you know, like if you're on the other side of this equation, if it's a brand new conference and they are hyping it up and it's going to be really huge, I would give it the side eye. Uh, on Tuesday, I talked about some other rules of thumb for how to know if something's a bad deal. And tomorrow I want to talk about book boxes. <laughs> then I will finish this week's rant on um, all the things that have been going on. But in, in the kingdom of science fiction and fantasy, we talk about Ogg's Law. And Ogg's Law is that money should flow to the writer or to the creator. And any time that the creator is paying out money for something, as opposed to money flowing to you because you're the one mining the gold, right? Then you ask the question. I mean, why are you putting out money? Yes, you need to buy shovels so that you could dig your gold. And yes, maybe you need to pay someone to build the track so that you can carry, you know, the have the cart to carry the gold out of the mine. I, I don't know enough details to make that analogy work, but you understand what I'm saying. Yes, you need to pay money into certain things, but if all the money is flowing away from you and not coming to you, then there's a problem. And that's why I really want to talk about book boxes because, uh, and, and I will, you know, full caveat say, I have not had a book in a book box. I've thought about it. Um, I've never gotten deep into negotiations. I have friends who have done it with really good book boxes and it's been great. Now I'm hearing stories about these really predatory book boxes. Um, <laughs> that's the thing about being a self publishing author is that people can really get you on this whole, you need to spend money on promo. You need to spend money on marketing and pretty soon all of that money is flowing away from you and not to you. So we'll talk about that more tomorrow. Uh, so on that note, I hope you all have a wonderful Thursday. Uh, I hope that, um, I hope if you've gotten caught up in one of these schemes that you're able to extract yourself sometimes, just calling it a loss and getting yourself clear is the best you can do. So good luck to you. I'm going to do my best to sign off on the double sign off here. You all take care. Bye-bye.